Dr. Jeffrey Hi. Rendisher, good to, to see you see again. You. Nice to, to see you. I've, I, we've had the pleasure of speaking now three different times in three yes. different formats. I've gotten right. to interview Jeff, so it's phenomenal to be able to hear how your research is going. And so, Dr. Right. Rendisher, you're from Harvard Medical School, and the research that Jeff is conducting is on basically bionic people, more or less, is how I guess I would describe them. So, talk a little right. bit about that. Give everybody an update on, first yes. of all, give us some context about what you're doing. Okay, so since 2003, I've been collecting medical evidence for people who've been. Uh, who show evidence for recovery from incurable medical illnesses? Yep. And you know, you listen to these. And so, people what? Wait. So, what are some of those incurable medical illnesses that you're yeah, talking about? Good. Okay. So, pancreatic cancer, okay. or autoimmune illness, or. Um, so these are people uh, who were supposed to not yes, make it, right. and they've made it, and, they and they've did. lived for. Yeah, they're still alive. Claire uh, diagnosed by biopsy with pancreatic endocarcinoma in 2008 expected to die, did not pursue treatment. She decided that the last few months of her life she's going to spend with people that she loved and not spend it in gloomy doctor's offices. Mm -hmm. And she valued science a lot, but uh, what she did was uh, focus on living and loving. And 2013, she had CT of the abdomen for unrelated reasons and the cancer was gone. That's incredible. It's incredible. And, and I've so, got story after story like this. How, so. how many people are in your study? Like, what is the patient population you're looking at? Yeah, so I uh, have talked to well over 100 people at this okay. point. Okay. And who all have really good medical evidence for recovery. Okay. And so what you start to see over time is patterns. Okay. And we should be studying this. I was going to ask you, I'm sorry, I'm like, did each of them decide to not pursue treatment or had some well, of them some pursued treatment? Okay, some so some did. of them did, so it's a yeah. mix. So, so for example, it's a complicated area of study because every illness has its own trajectory of cure and possibilities. Sure. So some cancers, I don't just study cancer, but cancer is a good example. Some cancers are untreatable. Some cancers you can do surgery, you can do chemo, you can do radiation, but they're strictly palliative and they only try to buy you a little okay. bit of time. Other cancers have an awful prognosis, but with treatment, it's great. So every illness is different. Of course. So you have to kind of understand each illness and really understand what the likelihood was that they got to a really great place. Okay, so tell me some of the things that you learned about these people who have been yeah. told you're right. not going to make it and yeah. they're still here. Yeah, so it's a really big topic and and so what you start to realize is that these people have fundamentally changed their life at every level. What we call spontaneous remission, there's nothing spontaneous about spontaneous remission. In medicine we typically say well that's an N of one that is a fluke, it has no scientific value, but you interview a lot of people, you start to realize that there are patterns here, and these people have fundamentally reshaped their lives, they have fundamentally reshaped their experience of themselves in the world at a deep level, and... Give yeah. us some examples, yeah. can, can yeah, you give yeah, us some absolutely. examples of those patterns you're yeah. seeing? Like, so, what do these people yes. have in common? Oh yeah, so like this morning, uh, I showed pictures of a woman who had pre-diabetes, heart disease, hypertension, depressed and miserable, and then 12 months later she's on the Dr. Off show and there's no way you could put those two photos of her next to each other and believe that that's the same person. Wow. That's 12 months difference. Um, you have cases of um, June who was diagnosed very carefully with ankylosing spondylitis which is an illness where your pelvis freezes in place mm -hmm. and then calcifies up the back of your spine from the pelvis to the neck and so your spine fuses and you can't move. She was told that that is her prognosis, that she was going to be completely immobilized. She wasn't in a wheelchair at the time, in awful pain. She changed her life at every level. She had a husband who adored her and a family that is really resistant, and really resilient at every mm -hmm. level. And she is a yoga master beyond belief. Oh and gosh, I showed incredible. photos this morning and she is more flexible than anybody I've ever seen. <laughs> and she has stories that are incredible. So is this, a, is this a biological thing? That, are so, these people's bodies just made up different at the cellular level? Well, that's a really or good question. Or is it a mental thing? So I think what our culture often makes the mistake of assuming is that a biological basis implies a biological cause, and that's actually not true. Okay. I think that the truth is we are all a lot more than our biology. Sure. There are capacities of mind and heart that we have not even begun to map because we have historically kept those really separate from each other. So is this like yeah. a power of positive thinking thing? Well, no. But I, I do think that there's 
something really special about the power of positive elevated emotion, yes. Positive elevated emotion. Positive elevated what emotion. What do you mean by that? Well, so I, I do think that there are ways to access a depth of gratitude and positive emotion that can have a transformative effect, but I also can tell you as a psychiatrist that if that is superimposed over unconscious loss or rage or shame or that sort of thing that you may not be aware of, that's going to get in the way. And so it has to be more than just a conscious sort of thing. It has to be a genuinely different experience of ourselves in the world. And so it's, so, and you know, these stories all are so inspirational. We haven't really begun to map a lot of this. Mm -hmm. I do believe that we're at a time when technology, as long as it looks at the whole person, yep. is gonna be able to map this and then augment these capacities in a way that's really exciting. Do, do you think we'll be yeah. able to kind of draw out whatever it is that's happening? Yes, I think so. Okay. Yeah, some of the new technologies, some of which are here. Okay. Um, in particular? Yeah, well, BioSay is one, and I'm part of this. So okay. I'm the medical advisor and the uh, angel for BioSay, which is at the Harvard Launch Lab. Sure. The founder and CEO is Rachel Donalds. She has her own story of spontaneous emission in the okay. context of the invention of this. And it really is an effort to help people get out of chronic fight or flight and into a deeply relaxed parasympathetic state, which is where healing occurs. Okay. And how does it do that? So it uses a com combination of heart rate variability, uh, facial recognition, text analysis, voice analysis, and helps combine things in a way to help people begin training ourselves and connect to each other more authentically in a way that I think is really exciting and has real potential for helping us learn to do things that in the past have taken you know years and sometimes decades of meditation to begin to learn. And I think that technology has the capacity to move the needle forward in a really exciting way with that. Fantastic. So. Well, Jeff, thank you so much for yeah. joining us again. And like I said, I mean, we've, we've, I, we've had the opportunity and the pleasure to yeah, speak right. three different times now. And it's <laughs> like every time I hear a little bit more about your research, it just yeah. sounds like you're getting further and further along and yeah. crystallizing some of those themes that you're going to have. Um, yeah. And so I'm waiting for the day when we're, <laughs> you were on stage earlier, but I mean, I can't wait to hear yeah. the results of all of this. When is your yeah. study going to be concluding? So I have a book that's coming out the Tuesday before Christmas of 2018, and I will talk about bio in there and then BioSay is getting close to launch okay. and it should be a really fun ride. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, good luck to <laughs> you. you. Thank you so, Thank much. You so much. Thank you.